Hello and welcome back and in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the operator overloading. So first of all let us understand the meaning of the operator overloading. Why we do the operator overloading. Okay so we do the operator overloading to make the operators versatile. Versatile means they can be used in different situations with different data types. Let me give you an example. Suppose there are two integers A and B. When you do A plus B, then uh, you know uh, your um, uh, system itself uh, adds these two numbers and assign it to the third variable. If you are assigning it to the any resultant variable, so that thing like uh, that thing has been done by the operating uh, so, uh, sorry by your uh, programming languages itself. Uh, your compiler itself gives you that facility that plus is an operator which does this thing it adds two integers floats uh, doubles anything so it is already defined for your uh, you know already existing built-in data types okay integer and float integer float these are built-in data types built-in types and operators work by default for them okay but suppose if you have created some user defined data type okay let me give you an example you create some complex number you have uh, you have a structure which represents the complex number okay and in this structure if you see in the complex number there are two parts of a complex number one is the real part and the other one is the imaginary part so let us give it like name like r and i okay r for real i for imaginary you create two variables of type complex okay and you want to add these two complex numbers and you want that after adding these two complex number you should get one more complex number as a result can you do that with the plus operator directly you create something like this complex c1 and complex c2 as well and you want like c3 is equal to c1 plus c2 if you do this if you do this you should be able to get the sum of these two numbers uh, complex numbers and that should be assigned to c3 which means c1 dot real plus c2 dot real should be c3 dot real and c1 dot imaginary plus c2 dot imaginary should come to the c3 dot imaginary will it be possible directly no because this uh, this is this these operators have not been defined for the you know for your uh, uh, user defined data types when you use the structure or the classes then you are creating a user defined data type so these operators have not been defined for the user defined data types so to achieve these operations to be done successfully for the user defined data types as well we use the fun uh, we use the feature of operator overloading and that is known as the operators versatility increasing the versatility of the operator what does that mean that means that we are defining the inbuilt operators uh, you know predefined operators uh, to for those data types which are user defined data types rather than uh, you know built in data types for built in data, data types they are already working we want them to work for our own defined data type our own user defined data type when whenever we do this we call that we are doing the operator overloading and this is the this is this is how we make uh, our operators more versatile versatile means it can work with many more okay so we will see with the example like how uh, it works and how we can create our program to overload certain operators so let me tell you uh, what are those operators which can be overloaded okay so this is the plus operator which means the addition operator that can this can be overloaded okay minus operator the multiplication operator the division operator pre increment and post increment operator so wherever i have written the sample i will give you the example and for rest of them you can do it yourself this will be an exercise for you that you do it yourself okay uh, there is one more operator asterisk which is used for dereferencing the pointer if you have studied about the pointers then you know that if you use the asterisk before the pointer name then it gives you the value stored at the particular address okay so we will overload this one as well and we will see a sample code for that this one the pointer to member operator uh, this is uh, for this you need to define it inside the class or the struct inside the class or the struct you can define the function inside the structure as well right similarly this thing if you have to overload this thing you cannot do it ordinarily you need to do it 
inside a class or inside a structure another one is the subscript operator for arrays this is really important subscript operator for arrays you know if you have created some uh, array inside your uh, structure and you want that you can get the value and set the values both then how we will do that okay so for that we need to understand like what is the procedure for doing that how we can follow that what code we need to write and what is the relation of uh, uh, overloading the subscript operator and the references that we have studied in the previous lecture okay this is the assignment operator this needs the class and structure this cannot be overloaded in uh, normal fashion so uh, until we study about the classes we will not do this and we will revisit later on when we will discuss about the classes and structures okay this comparison operator double equals this can be overloaded for class and norm uh, and uh, normally for uh, you know without any class we can normally uh, use it for uh, user defined data types and we will give it a sample and apart from that uh, greater than equal to smaller than equal to greater than smaller than okay all these operators can be overloaded normally okay and i will leave, leave it up to you to overload uh, these operators uh, write your program by yourself and see that how it behaves okay apart from that new delete these can be overloaded but these are related to the dynamic memory and also we will discuss when we will discuss it uh, we will when we will discuss about the dynamic memory and about the classes so when we will be uh, done with the classes and when we will be working on the dynamic memory allocation things there we will you know understand this thing okay so this is uh, you know uh, all about what we are going to discuss this one is the conversion operator if you want to convert some value into some user defined data type into a inbuilt data type like if you want to convert from complex to an integer value okay so that is an implicit conversion you cannot do it like uh, type without being without doing the type casting if you want to perform those things then you can use this conversion operators and this operator this operator means this is the name of the operator which is uh, basically used inside the class so uh, you can use uh, you can overload this operator as well okay this operator can also be overloaded and we will see the overloading of this operator when we will be understood uh, when we will be well versed with the concept of the classes okay so class struct these need to be overloaded for overloading the this uh, uh, you know inside the class and structures this can be overloaded this this operator can be overloaded apart from that there are few operators like dot comma and along with this uh, uh, colon and double colon which is the scope resolution operator we will discuss about this the scope resolution operator so this thing uh, we will be discussing so if you have to see like which operators cannot be overloaded then these are the operators which cannot be overloaded apart from this whatever we discussed on the top we will be able to overload and as soon as we will move ahead in our course uh, with the lectures ahead we will be discussing all those operators which can be overloaded okay now let us see how to overload these operators so let me write some piece of code so i am just going to write a structure struct complex so this is representing the complex number inside this i will be writing like int r which is the real part and then int i which is the imaginary part okay and uh, i am going to uh, overload plus operator okay so let me write like complex operator plus and complex reference of c1 complex uh, reference of c2 okay so i can use simple uh, variable like without using the references but in the previous lecture you might have understood like what is a reference okay if you pass any reference to a function then in that case any changes you do in the uh, in this complex uh, number then in that case uh, in this uh, reference variable then that case that will be refer uh, that will be reflected into the function where it has been called okay so you can do one thing like const complex c1 and const complex c2 we will see if we can do this or not okay and after that if you want to return the result after adding these two complex numbers so basically we are getting two complex numbers complex c1 complex c2 we will 
add these two numbers and after adding these two numbers we will result uh, we will return the result as another complex number so let me declare a variable which will be returned as a you know i can give like r e s u l t okay so result dot r is equal to you know c1 dot r plus c2 dot r the result dot i is equal to c1 dot i plus c2 dot i okay so now we can return like return result okay so basically we are adding two complex numbers their real parts we are adding and assigning it to the real part of the result we are adding the imaginary parts of the two complex numbers and assigning it to the imaginary part of the result and then we are returning the result okay now let us see how complex c1 how we can do this inside c1 okay it should be complex c1 dot r is equal to 1 c1 dot i is equal to 2 okay now let us see another complex variable complex c2 okay one more thing uh, you need to uh, take care of like uh, not take care of basically you need to note it down that in case of c language you can first define declare the uh, variables and after that you define it all the variables that you need to use in your program that all you need to declare on the top but in case of c++ there is no such case you can declare your variable anywhere okay so complex c2 c2 dot real is equal to 10 c2 dot i is equal to 20 okay so this is the one which we are going to add c1 and c2 and complex c3 is equal to c1 plus c2 okay so if our code will reach into this plus operator then how we will find it endl i can put a message here because i am not going to tell you right now about the debugging so i will not show you it by debugging i will just show you that uh, yes this is the proof that when you call this function it went here inside this okay so inside the plus operator overloaded okay so this is how you can uh, find out like yes your uh, control went in here okay so now we are going to print endl okay c3 dot r and then plus i into okay imaginary part into the c3 dot imaginary part okay okay so this is the one we are just going to you know run it and if you run it then you will be able to see that it will give you the result in c3 and you will be able to print the real imaginary part of c result so let us run it so here you go so 11 plus i into 22 because we have taken like 10 as real part and 20 as imaginary for for c2 so when this will be added it will become 10 plus 1 11 and 20 plus 20 uh, 20 plus 2 22 so this is giving me the correct result and you can see if you have seen the output then uh, you can see that it was printed inside the plus operator overloaded so this proves that my uh, control went in here okay so you can uh, practice this sample code and you can see like how it can be overloaded for the plus operator apart from the plus operator uh, you can overload this uh, 
minus operator, asterisk operator, m percent, which means the div uh, not m percent. It should be like a division operator. Where is the division operator? So you can use that division operator. So uh, let me see where is that operator. Yes. It's like uh, division. Yeah, I just forget it. It's the division operator. Okay, so you need to overload this division operator. And this operator uh, percentage is the modulus operator it is known as. So whatever remainder is there, that should be coming, right? So you can take different kind of uh, um, structures. And it's not like, it's always like you can take complex. You can take another uh, structure which can only have one member. It, it, it is not necessary that you create more than one member inside the class inside the structure you can create only one member as well inside the you can declare only one member inside the structure as well so that will also work for you okay so int r int i real and imaginary parts are there so this way you can keep working on them and you can uh, just uh, uh, you know do the addition similarly you can do the subtraction so subtraction and rest of the operation i am leaving it up to you you do it yourself okay but i hope you might have understood the concept right so when you call like c1 plus c2 then basically this plus if it is a if if these are working on the uh, user defined data types then obviously this plus will be called for this particular complex type data type defined data type uh, you know operators so this plus will be called for only you it will not be called for any other data type if you use the int variables then it is not going to call this it will call the default built-in functionality okay so wherever you have defined it for the user defined data types c1 and c2 there only it will work okay so this was about the plus operator overloading now we will see uh, about the pre increment and post increment okay so let me uh, do the pre increment and post increment but how your system will identify if you are doing the pre increment and post increment okay that thing we are going to discuss you know about the pre increment right if you do the pre increment then what happens value incremented first and then assignation is done okay so on the on the line where you have done this plus plus as a pre increment operator at that place only the plus plus operation will take place and you, and the value will get incremented but in case of post increment value gets assigned first and then what happens and then it is incremented okay so first value gets assigned and then it gets incremented so we need to implement both the functionalities for pre increment and post increment so how we do that let us see that you need to see it very uh, you know uh, fo in a in a focused manner because this is uh, a very important concept and uh, it is asked most of the times in the interview questions so just uh, be focused here for pre increment and post increment so first of all i am going to do pre increment so i'm just going to return a complex variable and operator plus plus and i will take like complex and it should be reference of c why i'm using reference i hope you are getting the point because reference is basically uh, here as well like i have used the reference so reference is basically we don't need to make a copy here for this c1 right i just need to use it then why to make use uh, make the copy of this variable so wherever you don't want to make a copy of a variable inside a function pass it as a reference just keep it in mind that's a good programming practice that's a good coding practice in c++ okay so here as well i don't need to do anything else with this uh, you know uh, c i sorry here i don't need to do anything else with this c c1 and c2 so i just took there as a and i also make them constant because i should not be able to make any changes to this c1 because i am asking 
wherever I will call it I am just asking that add these two numbers I am not asking that you make any changes so inside this function to disallow anything like any changes in C1 and C2 we have given it as const so these are the you know smaller things that 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 makes you a good coder if you take care of these things then your code is very much good and it's not that much vulnerable to be broken by any of the new developer who is writing the new code after you are gone from your organization okay because the code that you are writing that will never uh, res reside with you forever this will go to someone else after you someone else will take care of it okay so you need to make it uh, make the code in such a manner you should be able to write the code in such a manner so that whosoever is coming after you they should be uh, able to fit into it and they should be uh, as perfect as you have written the code perfectly here okay so that is why these smaller things like why I have made constant constant means no one can make a change in this C1 so those kind of things we are doing here okay so here uh, in the pre increment operator what we are doing uh, we are taking the reference again for the C but we are not taking here as a constant because in this C which is the real variable we have to make plus plus we have to increment it as well so I'm not using this uh, constant right so what I'm going to do I'm just going to create a result variable complex C result okay and inside the C result what I can do C result dot r is equal to c dot r plus plus and c result dot i is equal to plus plus let me correct the top one as well i okay so on the top as well it should be plus plus c dot r right so you know that pre increment first of all it increments and then assigns so what will happen whatever value you have provided as a real that will be incremented first and then that value will be assigned to i uh, sorry r similarly for i and then we are going to you know return this c result okay so this is the pre increment operator and we have preserved the meaning of the pre increment operator as well you need to take care of this thing very carefully that you should not change the real meaning of the operator pre increment means first increment and then assign post increment means first assign and then do the increment so this is the this is this particular version of the function is for the pre increment operator pre increment operations okay you cannot use it for the post increment operation because plus plus is the only thing which is used so how you will distinguish between the pre increment and post increment right so that is why we have two versions to in uh, you know uh, implement these uh, kind of operators in pre and post versions so if I'm going to write now for the post version then I need to do this thing apart from this thing like complex reference of C I need to provide a very uh, a, a instruction to the compiler that it's the post increment version so whenever you will call the post increment version of operator on complex variable then this particular function will be called for proof let us put a message here inside the post increment version okay so this is the post increment version and uh, here what I will do uh, here I will write C out this is the pre increment version okay so this is the pre increment version the later one is the post increment version but here we need to change the behavior okay you know that whenever you use the post increment first the assign assignation took place okay so C result dot r is equal to c dot r right why I am doing this I hope you are able to understand because first the assignation should get done and after the complex number itself should get incremented so first I will assign this c result dot i is equal to c dot i and then what I will do I will do uh, you know c dot 
uh, r plus plus and c dot i plus plus that's it so we have incremented this c and since we have passed this reference so directly we have changed the c the real complex number that will be passed here how we will pass it we will just see it you will be able to understand how to do this uh, increment and decrement thing so i'm just going to use it in my code i'm just going to remove all these things and i'm just going to write some new piece of code to see the use of pre increment and post increment so let me create one variable complex c1 and then complex c uh, sorry not that is the only thing complex c1 needed and now i'm just providing like c1 dot r is equal to 10 c1 dot uh, you know i is equal to uh, 20 okay and first of all i'm going to use the pre-incremented version okay so in case of pre-incremented version complex cr c result okay and i'm going to use c1 sorry plus plus c1 pre-increment operator so when i will call this pre-increment operator this should go here this is the pre-increment version this control will go here this function will run and when this will be printed it will be proof for you that yes this was the pre-incremented version which was called for the plus plus operator so what we are going to do here we have called here and now we are going to use the C out and we are going to print like C R dot R real part and then I'm just going to do this thing like uh, plus I into okay and then I'm just going to C R dot uh, you know I okay so these are the two parts that will be you know visible here so what will happen here c1 will be incremented first and then the assignation will take place so c1 will also become c1 dot r is equal to 11 okay this will become 11 and this will become 21 and after this after the c1 becomes like 11 and 21 for the real and imaginary parts after that this will be assigned to cr so cr and c1 both will contain same value okay both of them will contain same value and that is the purpose of the pre-increment operator basically we are preserving the real meaning real behavior of the pre-increment uh, pre-increment operator as well Th this is just the logic you can do a mistake whatever you have written in the post you can write in the pre whatever you can written in the pre you can write in the post that will be a mistake that is why we are discussing this okay because there are two versions pre increment post increment pre decrement post decrement the decrement thing you can do it yourself because if you have understood this decrement thing you can do it yourself okay and that i will suggest that you must do it yourself okay so cr.cr and cr.i both will be printed same and uh, here if i write like for c1 dot r and c1 dot i that should also print correctly so two lines will be printed one for the cr one for the c1 and now let us see what will be the output so the pre-increment version will be called and you will be able to see the message there this is the pre-incremented version and you can see 11 plus i into 21 11 plus i into 21 the top one is for the cr and the bottom one is for this c1 the original value okay so this is how it is working okay so this is the pre-increment version now let us see the post increment version okay so here in the post increment version you can see how it will identify how the compiler identifies that you are going to call the post increment version because of this whenever you will print uh, like uh, whenever you will put this plus plus after the uh, operand then it knows that it need to call this particular overloaded operator okay so plus plus post increment operator what does this mean first of all the assignation will take place so whatever is there inside c1 10 and 11 okay that will be assigned first which means that 10 and 20 
10 and 20 will be assigned to the CR's real and imaginary parts and after that C1 will increment it. Its real and imaginary parts will be incremented for C1. Okay, But CR will be assigned before the incrementation take place. So CR will remain as it is. Whatever C1 contains like 10 and 20, these are the real and imaginary parts and these real and imaginary parts will go with uh, the CR and they will be uh, you know printed as it is 10 and 20 but this incrementation will only take place for the c1 so this second line will print like 11 plus 21 i but first line will print only like 10 plus 20 i so let us see so it went into the post increment version and you can see whatever i discussed right now 10 plus i into 20 was for the resultant uh, complex number and this is for the original complex number right why you have used reference that is clear if not clear let me know you can message me so this reference this constant why not constant here all these smaller things these are the good port coding practices and this should be in your mind as soon as you do a lot of coding you start doing a lot of coding these things become very easy for you so Programming is just like the mathematics. You can learn it. You can remember the things. But until you practice it, you will forget everything. Okay. So programming is, uh, you know, a very good thing which needs a practice from your side, which demands a lot of practice from your side. Without practice, it will all vanish one day. No matter how good you know, how theoretically good you know all the things. Okay. Now let me move towards another operator so i hope you will be able to overload the decrement operator as well the pre decrement operator and the post decrement operator as well you need to do the same thing int will be applied to the post decrement operator as well okay now let me overload another operator let me give you the example of another operator so this is the dereferencing for the pointer okay Suppose I have taken this uh, complex C1, okay, this variable I have taken and uh, I just want to store the address of this complex variable inside some pointer like is equal to address of C1, okay. You know that when you use the asterisk uh, P then the address of C1 has been stored here but whenever you use the uh, asterisk P if you use the asterisk p then original value is stored at a particular variable address is referenced is dereferenced and you get it right if you write like int a is equal to 10 and then you write like int asterisk p is e uh, p1 is equal to address of a and then if you refer like asterisk p1 then it will refer this value 10 but p1 will contain the address of a right so this is something we are going to do again here okay so asterisk p is equal to c1 and i want to you know when i call the asterisk then i should print the value which is the actual value inside this c1 real and imaginary part so that we are going to do okay so let us see how we can do that so let me just uh, comment it for now okay now let me overload this asterisk operator using this asterisk operator I am not going to return anything so I am using the void okay so void operator asterisk and then that will be the complex reference of C okay so what I am going to do I am just going to print it I don't want to do any changes into this complex number right so what I should do I hope you understood const because we don't want to do any change in this C we just want to print we just want to use whatever came along with this C so let me do this thing so C out okay so if I do this C out E and uh, uh, sorry E and DL or yeah you can do like C dot uh, R plus sorry then plus i into okay and then c dot i okay 
so this is the way you can print it so the value actually at this particular C wherever it has been stored for that particular address whatever value is stored for the real and imaginary parts that should be printed okay that is the purpose of asterisk operator the you know pointer uh, you know when you dereference it so this is the dereferencing a variable pointer variable operator so that we are going to use here so let me just write like asterisk p here okay so if i do asterisk p will it print okay it will print okay so it is going to print it i will just do asterisk p and it will print Okay, this is strict P. Okay. Okay, let us make it, uh, you know, not like this because this asterisk P is not, will not be able to call your, you know, this one until you assign it to some pointer variable. Okay. So, what you need to do, complex, uh, you know, R is equal to asterisk of P. Okay complex r is equal to asterisk of p so you need to do like complex operator and you need to return the value sorry the reference and you need to just return like return c okay so you can do this thing so whatever is c that is just simply returning it so it will come into the r and uh, here we can do like r dot r and r dot i so what we are doing here asterisk p is storing the address of c1 and then in a complex number we are dereferencing it okay so when we are dereferencing it uh, what it is saying in a slice to type const complex okay so you need to do like this one if either you make it const complex here as well const complex then it will work okay then let us see what will happen so here it's like asterisk p it is returning asterisk p means the value at the address so basically we are returning the value at the address using here because you know about the reference operators if you have understood clearly about the reference operators then you can see that this reference operator will be returning the c the value at the location uh, stored at uh, where the C has been stored so that value will come here and it will assign to R okay so then we are going to print the real and imaginary parts of R so let us see what happens okay so here you can see like I have not assigned anything to real and imaginary parts so C1 dot R is equal to 0 uh, sorry 1 c1 dot i is equal to 10 okay so now we are going to open it so 1 plus i into 10 that has been printed so what we have done if we are inside this operator or not let me write it inside the operator for d referencing okay so that is how it's going to work so let me see if this message comes or not okay so this message is basically not coming so it is not actually uh, assigning any value to this one i mean this function is not getting called because this is able to perform the operation without this operator okay so what we need to understand here that even we can overload it without any class or without any structure even then the original pointer operation will be carried out okay you are getting the point original pointer operations will be carried out which has been provided which has been inbuilt right so this one just like here I have written for many of them like until we use the class or structure we cannot use them but here you can see that you are able to use it you are able to you know use it uh, overload it but still your function is uh, not getting called this operator is not getting called 
okay so this you need to remember that although the dereferencing operator you can overload but still it will not be called the original pointer operation are sufficient that is why they will not be called original pointer operators are sufficient so they will not be called and ultimately they will work only with the classes okay so this you need to remember so this might be a bit complex for you this one specifically but yes you just need to remember that although you can overload it but still without using inside a class or inside a structure which is a user defined data type this will not be working original pointer to member operations they are all sufficient you can understand like if you don't write this then also this was going to work right so that is what was the purpose to understand it okay now let us move ahead what other operator we need to overload okay so we have uh, two more operators which uh, for which I can give you the samples uh, this subscript operator and this uh, you know overloaded uh, double equals which means the comparison operator okay so first of all I'm just going to use this comparison operator comparison operator is basically used to compare two values if the two values are same then it returns true if the two values are not same then it returns false so let me overload this operator comparison operator okay so I'm just going to write it like bool because comparison operator will always return a boolean value either true or false so I'm going to write it like this this is the syntax return type then operator and then operator symbol and then give the name of the variables complex reference c1 okay and what kind of variable it should be const it should be const okay const complex c2 reference of c2 so basically we are providing two variables to this uh, operator which is actually a function so operator overloaded operator is nothing it's just a function okay so it will return a boolean value if both c1 and c2 which means their real and, and imaginary parts if they are same right and they are uh, same for their real imaginary parts and there is nothing differing then in that case we will be returning true otherwise we will be returning false so we are just going to write like b ret is equal to false okay and now we are going to write something like this c1 dot r is equal to c2 dot r and c c1 dot i is double equals c2 dot i then in that case what we will do b ret is equal to true and then what we will do we will just return it b ret okay it's very simple if both the uh, c1 and c2 are same then in that case it will return true otherwise it will return false okay so here what i can do c out just a proof that yes it went here inside the comparison operator okay so let me see so let me remove it c1 is there that's okay let me make it another variable like c2 here i will create another variable c2 so it's like c2 and then c2 dot r c2 dot i and now i will just do c1 double equals c2 then it will be like c out en dl both are same else C out E and DL both are not same. Okay, so let us see what happens. Let's run it. Okay, so you can see this is inside the comparison operator and both are same, so it is printing both are same okay so this double equals or the comparison operator can be overloaded 
and it can work outside the class or structure as well okay few of the operators are there which can only work with uh, class and structures but these ones can work without the class and structure okay so let us see uh, if i you know comment this i'm going to comment this from here till here i'm just going to comment this one okay so let's see what will happen now it will give me the compilation error it will give me that there is no you can see this binary complex does not define this operator or a conversion to a type acceptable to the predefined operator you can see how beautifully it has explained the error okay so here you need to make it uncommented and then it will work now this was the comparison operator apart from the comparison operator there are another operator which returns true or false like this one greater than equal to smaller than equal to greater than smaller than these all can be overloaded so you can choose your own structure you can work on it like on the uh, you know uh, on re, uh, on this complex number as well okay so this is how you can overload it you can create another structure where there is only one member and you can overload these uh, greater than equal to smaller than equal to all these operators you can overload just like i am going to do for the subscript operator for now okay i will be doing uh, this is the last example for today this will be the last sample for today and, and i'm going to do this for you okay so i'm just going to uh, you know overload this subscript operator okay before we do this let me uh, you know just remove all these things because i will create a new structure now okay so what is the meaning of this basically when you create an array int array suppose 10 then you can do something like array i is equal to you know array 0 zero, 0th index you can do something like 10 right and you can also assign some value to uh, from the array index okay so you can do these things both ways you can do right so assignation can be done and you can assign your value as well you can set and get both the values you can get and set both the operations you can do so how you will do this uh, these both the operations right because you know that this uh, uh, this operator uh, whatever operator we are overloading these all operators are just like the functions right so if you are if we consider about this array 0 is equal to 10 okay so this is fine right int k is equal to array 0 this is fine but what about this because you can uh, this is fine sorry this one is fine in a function you are calling uh, on the below one you are calling uh, you know you are calling a function and it is returning some value so this is fine this is something you do right int k is equal to some function this is similar to this right function call on the right hand side and whatever function is returning that will be assigned to k this is usual practice that you might have seen in many of the programming languages in c as well okay but what about this this is the top one right this top one is similar to something like this you are calling a function and you are putting the function call on the right hand side uh, sorry left hand side is it possible yes it is very much possible and i hope you might be able to get like when it is possible if you are not able to guess it let me tell you that it can be done only when your function is returning a reference if your function is returning a value then in that case it cannot be done but in case your function is returning any of the if your function is returning any reference a reference then function call can be on left hand side okay this you need to remember this this is a very important concept and if you have to overload this uh, subscript operator then in that case you need to return the reference for the overloaded operator so let us do this thing and before that let me define a structure which will contain an array a struct dummy okay and inside this dummy i am just going to create an integer array array 
and I'm just going to give it a size of 5 okay this is of size 5 and uh, I just want to assign this value as well and I just want to uh, get the value as well so I need to overload an operator let me give you like okay, uh, it will return the integer right so int operator this operator into reference it will be returning the reference because ultimately we have to work on this integer array so it will be int okay and now let me put like uh, uh, here it will be dummy okay dummy reference D this will be the variable why it is complaining yes it is complaining correctly this one also you need to include in the list of those operators which can only be overloaded when they are in the uh, class or struct okay so here what we can do we can see a sample for reference calling uh, for a function which returns a reference and which can be called on the left hand side okay so that we can use it right so this also you need to remember that this can also be overloaded only when it is inside a class or inside the structure apart from that you cannot do that right so this thing also you need to do can only be overloaded when inside a class or struct what is the meaning of being inside a class or a struct we are going to discuss in coming lectures okay when we will discuss about the classes after that things will be clear this things will become clear for you okay so let us do one thing let us take the sample code where my function is returning int fun and let me write like int a int b and let me do like int r is equal to uh, you know you can simply write like return a plus b okay so basically when it is returning reference then what does this mean if you put this on the left hand side then also it is you know referring to the address of the uh, value at the particular address right so if I do something like this int reference k right and if I do like uh, fun and a b and if I print it sorry c out and if I print k then it will give me the result which is the usual way right so here I am writing like int a is equal to 10 int b is equal to 20 so result should be 30 so I am passing it to the function and then I am storing it inside the k okay so what is this why it is complaining okay initial non constant would be l value if your function is returning a reference then function call can be on the left hand side can only be overloaded when inside a class and a stretch okay can be on the left hand side can only be overloaded when inside a class or struct this one again you cannot do because it is returning a reference so let us not do this like uh, int reference something like that let me just move it from here and let me return like 10 only return not 10 basically int k uh, you can do like uh, 10 cannot be written because it is a constant so let me take some other value some constant variable oh, sorry some global variable int l is equal to 10 so let me return l from here okay so I'm returning l from here right so if I have to put a function call like int k 
is equal to fun and if you print C out E N D L K then what will happen it will simply give me the result as 10 okay, it is print is printed as 10 okay now what I want to do I want to do like fun is equal to K okay I have declared K here int K and I need to call this K like this I am putting it on the right hand side since this function returning L so when you are going to the K basically you are putting on the left hand side so what you are doing you are returning a reference basically you are working on the reference so what you are going to do you are just going to the variable K its address basically you are going to the address and then you are referring the value at that address that is what the reference is so because of this if you put uh, the call on the left hand side then also k will be referred by this reference this reference variable okay this will act like a reference variable altogether and it will do the same thing that you are doing here for this one right so whatever you have with you like it's l that is with you so the l value of l will be assigned to k okay it will reach to the k and whatever you are getting from the reference that will be assigned to k that uh, 10 will be assigned to k so here you can see uninitialized so you can do like 0 so if you are uninitialized it then you can see okay so it has been 0 even if you are returning 10 then also k is 0 because if you print if you are using this k uh, here on the right hand side then it is becoming like this int reference of k l is equal to k something like this it is happening okay so if you are doing this then in that case what will happen since this has been initialized here and you are using on the left hand side so this will not be changed this k will remain same because i told you it has become similar to this int reference of l is equal to k that is what we were doing in the reference variables in the past video okay so if you print the value of k here that is fine but if you print the value sorry if you print the value of l here which is l so if you print the value of l here then what will happen let us see okay so there is no change in this one l will still be 10 okay k is still the same thing right so you can put the call on the left hand side but the original rules for the references will again be working in the same manner they are not going to assign like this until you are inside a member function uh, sorry until you are a member function of some class or struct the expected behavior you cannot expect okay because if you are on the uh, on the outside of any class or uh, function uh, struct then in that case the default behavior of reference will take over so it's not going to work for you okay it will whatever we were expecting like k will be assigned to l or l will be assigned to k that is not going to work but if it is inside a class then only it will work as expected from us why that will work as expected for us as expected from us that we will be discussing once we will understand the concept of classes so with this one i'm just going to close this uh, lecture here and uh, you can go to the uh, you know uh, in the document section and there you can find out the notes as well so with this have a nice day and bye bye we'll meet soon in the next video till then nice day bye bye